Shabbos Chalom Pesach and leading into the final days of, uh, of the holiday. Uh, we focus on Yitzhak Mitzrayim and the exodus uh, from Egypt. And um, <clears throat> part of the uh, narrative is the shifting reality and shifting perceptions of reality and how we assimilate that information and uh, what we do about it. Okay, so uh, let's look first at in Shmos Perak Yudalad Pasakei. That's Exodus 14.5. This is um, <clears throat> when Paro had sent out the, the, the Bnei Yisrael from Egypt, but he's still kind of trying to process what's going on. Uh, the verse says, Vayugad lo melech mitzrayim kivarach ha'am. It was told to the king of Egypt that the people had fled. Now, why exactly uh, that's news to the king of Egypt? We talked about this in the past. Uh, we see it's vayhi bishalach paro ha'am. That's the the beginning of the name, that's the beginning of the Parsha, when Paro sent them out, so of course he knows that they fled. And we answered that uh, he was clinging to this notion of they're going for um, three days, even though it was a deal he had rejected. Uh, but nevertheless, <clears throat> after three days, he said, wait a second, how come the people haven't come? And he expresses, uh, if not buyer's remorse, let's call it uh, sender's remorse. The attitude of Paro and his servants flipped um, <clears throat> about the people, Vayomru, Ma zos osinu. What is this that we have done? That we sent out the people from serving us. So that ma zos osinu. What have we done? If we examine that phrase or variations of the phrase, we'll see a common thread. We'll see this again a little bit later. Same parak. And this is now sukim uh, yud and yud aleph in yud. It says uh, the the people are looking back and they see that. The Egyptian army is uh, is chasing them, and they have nowhere to go, and they call out to God. And then in Yud Aleph, that's uh, we're now in uh, chapter fourteen, verse eleven. It says, "Vayru Moshe." They said to Moshe, "Hamibli in kvarim b'mitzrayim lekachtan ulamos." What? There weren't enough graves in Egypt that you had to take us here to die. Bamidbor, excuse me, lekachtan ulamos bamidbor to take us to die here in the desert. Ma zos osisa lanu lotzianu mitzrayim. What have you done to us to take us out of Egypt? So again, mazos asisa lano. What is this that you've done to us? Now, if we that, that phrase mazos asisa asisa, what is this that you have done that we have done that God has done? Um, that's a uh, a tip, um, a, 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 a key to understanding the tenor and which way the discussion is going. This phrase mazos, coupled with some language of doing, shows up a number of times. The first time, notably, is when um, <coughs> Chavon at the um, in, uh, is persuaded by the snake to defy the command of the Almighty, and she takes of the of the etzadas, and she gives it. She eats of it, and she gives it to her husband to Adam to eat. And Hashem says, uh, "La isha." This is in uh, Bracious Gimel. Gimel. This is uh, Genesis three three. Says, "Ma zos osis." What is this that you have done? In other words, it seems to be a um, an opening of a critique. What is? How come you've deviated? Let's let's look again at. Gracious, this is now uh, Yud Beis Yud Aleph, uh, 12, 11. This is when uh, Avram tells uh, Paro that Sarai is his wife, and it turns out not to be that case. Excuse me, it's his sister. It turns out that she's his wife. Vayomer, mazo sosisoli. What is this that you have done to me? This is Paro challenging Avram. How did you, how did you let this happen? Why did this happen? Um, and then again, in Chavtes, uh, Chavhe, that's 29, 25 in Bereshis. Vayomer el Lavan, mazos osisoli. What is this that you've done to me? This is after Lavan switches the, um, Yaakov's bride from Rachel to Leah, to a different daughter. Uh, again, Vayomer uh, Avimelech, mazos osisolano. This is again, now this time is with Avimelech. What have you done to me? With, again, identifying uh, his wife as his uh, as his sister. Uh, and we have again, Vayetze Libam, Vayecheradu, Vayecherdu, this is talking about uh, Yosef's brothers who find the plant of uh, uh, the the goblet of uh, Yosef in their uh, sacks, and they said, "Mazos asa elokim lano, mazos asa." What is this? What's going on here? What is this that God has done to us? The plans are messed up. Let's look at Sefer Shoftim. Sefer Shoftim. Pasuk says, "Velo shamatem bekolo you have bekoli you haven't listened to my voice." Mazos asisim. What is this that you have done? Again. Um, when when uh, uh, people are talking to Shimshon and they say, "Don't you know that the police team they're gonna they're going if we defy them they're going to hurt us?" Ma zos osi solanu. They're talking to Shimon. What, what what is this that you're doing here? This isn't the plan. Again, Yona, 
um, they're trying to figure out in the book of, of, of Jonah why this uh, uh, tempest is causing so much uh, risk and havoc to the ship. And again, ma-zos asisa. So we see that this ma-zos asisa, asis, asisem, asinu. What is this that you did, that we did, that they did, that God did? Ma-zos. Now this is in contrast to, let's say, when uh, <clears throat> Yitzhak sends what, who he thinks is Esau to uh, bring him food. He says, ma ze mi harta lavo. Excuse me. He says, uh, th this is in uh, Bereshis Chav Zayin, uh, Posuk uh, Chav. That's uh, 2820. Vayomi Yitzchak el Beno, and Yitzchak said to his son, this is Yaakov, who did not have to, he short-circuited the, the process. He didn't go out hunting. He rather uh, presented something that his mother had already prepared. Ma ze mi harta lim tsobini. How is it that you found something so quickly? Now, that is not a negative comment. That obviously was pleasing to Yitzchak. He didn't say ma zos. He said ma ze. It appears that the usage of ma, zos, and then some variation of asisa, asinu, asisem, asolokim is a, uh, a signal. It's a hint. It's an allusion to uh, uh, either plans going awry, uh, instructions being defied, uh, something not happening the way I conceived it to have happened. So this is the Almighty speaking to Chava and saying, I didn't command you. I commanded you not to eat, and you went and ate. And all the others are, how come you frustrated the plans? How come you misrepresented? There's a question of a perception of a, a changed reality, a reality that does not meet expectations. Let's go back to Paro. How is he freaked out over the departure of the children of Israel from Mitzrayim? Actually, uh, after having gone through all of the makos and all of the, the suffering that they went through, and then he knows why he sent them out. He sent them out because he couldn't tolerate the alternative. And yet, he says, what is this? That we have done. Ma zos asinu. What have we done? We did something wrong. We didn't follow what logic would dictate. We think logic would dictate. Go ahead and do it. So why is this expression is uh, uh, revealing? It shows that there's something that they're stuck on a plan, and this plan was frustrated. What was the plan? V'shalach paro sa'on. Or Yaakov Kamenetsky uh, asks this, and he says he gives a couple of answers. And one of them, he says, the Torah is, is telling us now. This is in uh, Emes Yaakov on v'shalach. Uh, that's 14.5. He says, the Torah is telling us how much our rod zone, the way we want things to be, how much that can affect our perception of reality. In other words, it's not simply that things have gone awry. But for Paro, who has the ability to persist until he doesn't, he says, I know I made a decision. He, he, he literally has center's remorse. He knows it was a logical thing to do to send out the Jews because he had the proverbial gun to his head. But yet, he kept second-guessing himself, and he kept, why did he second-guess himself? There's many circumstances under which one would second-guess themselves. The, 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 the Jews, when they say, when they say, weren't there enough graves in, in Egypt? In other words, the, the, the B'nai Yisrael are, are um, <clears throat> second-guessing out of fear, out of a challenge. They're meeting a challenge, and they say, whoa, why are we doing this? It's like people who, it happens in very good marriages. People have a breakdown of a uh, 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 an issue in the marriage, and the first thing we do is we say, I want to get out of here. Now, what does I want to get out of here mean? Sometimes it means I just have to end this. Uh, I have to resolve this. This is a difficult situation. But the mind will make people think of all kinds of things. And that's how people end up doing terrible things to their spouses, because they say, Mazos, this isn't the way I wanted it to be. And they freak out, and there's an, a reaction that's not rational. And Rivako says this reaction that's not rational can even be to what somebody thinks is a rational response. It's what the ultimate desire, the rut zone, the way I want things to be, can have an effect on the way I think, and I end up not being rational, but rationalizing. I find some excuse to change an accurate perception of reality. And if things don't go my way, then, I, then, then one of the responses is, well, then I'm just going to redefine reality so that I can accomplish what I want. Why, why did we send out the children of Israel? All of a sudden, Paro, for whatever reason, who wants the his slave force to continue, and he regrets having sent them because now he's contemplating the consequences. And this isn't what I had in mind, and therefore I'm going to change my perception. And isn't this what we're seeing on the streets today? We see there's a reality, and the reality is not the way people want it to be, so they deny it. They deny the reality, and they say, what do I want? When the real question should be, what does God want? What I want is irrelevant. It's relevant to figuring out how I deal with it, but it's not relevant to where I'm supposed to get. One of the <clears throat> 
overarching themes of Yitzhak in time of the Exodus of Egypt is the the need to change perception. Kadosh Baruch works; he needs the dough, if you will, of Klal Yisrael of the children of Israel to get them to change their perceptions. As the Ibn Ezra very starkly talks about the slave mentality that the entire generation of um, of the Yotze and Shrim of those who left Egypt had, except for Kalev and Yeshua. And <clears throat> it had to be changed. The, the attitude of the nation has to be changed. And we see there are many nations whose attitudes have to be changed today. What we know, what we have to do, is not what we want to do, but what HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants of us. We want to make, ultimately, our Ratzon, his Ratzon. We want to be Mevatel, our Ratzon, so that we are on the same page with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and then we have truly left the bonds of Egypt. Have a good Shabbos and a good Yom Tov.